Hello, welcome to the Mirror of the World, and I want to thank you for joining today. Thank you for watching the live video, and um, if you're watching this later on on YouTube, we want to thank you. Um, we'd like to let our viewers know that as from the month of March, we are going to be moving on to YouTube. Uh, we're going to be posting the Facebook. Uh, we're going to be posting the the live version on Facebook, but we are going to be moving on to YouTube as uh, instructed uh, by the Lord. Before we start today, I would like us to say a short prayer. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for another opportunity to look into your word. Lord, I ask that you will show us what you want us to see in your words today. Lord, I ask that you will help me to speak exactly what you want your people to hear people who are watching this video not what i want to say but what you want to say to them lord that is what you're going to help them to hear lord when they hear your word i ask that you will write your words in our heart so that we may know you that's what you said you said you will write your words in our hearts that we may know you from the smallest to the greatest and I ask, Lord, that whatever it is that you write in our heart today, through the power of the Holy Spirit, our life will be transformed into it. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen and amen. Like I said, this is the mirror of the world. What we do on this program is to read a chapter of the Bible, and then we pray for those who are sick, and we give someone the opportunity to sign up for Jesus now, the reason why we do this is because we want to encourage people to study the Bible. Read the Word of God for yourself. We are getting into the days and age where you cannot survive based on what you were told by your pastor or a prophet or somebody who haven't even, they've got no idea whether God exists. Some people say, um, uh, if there is God, how come we have all these worlds and everything like that? God is not responsible for the for the world. You know, the heavens of heaven belong to our God and the earth he has committed to the Son of Man. That's what the scripture says. And then we have what is called the God of this world, which is Satan responsible for all the calamity is got nothing to do with God at all. So we have been reading the book of Matthew, and today we are going to be reading Matthew chapter 12, and we have captioned this, you will give an account of every I do words you are spoken. Uh, this is going to help some of us to start minding the words that comes forth from our mouth. You know, um, we, we started reading the book of Matthew and I want to encourage you to go on our YouTube channel and watch the videos we've done so far on the book of Matthew. We started the Mirror of the World uh, 1st January 2018. So we got over 300 videos, I mean, on 300 chapters of the Bible Bible, you know, on our YouTube channel. So you can just go and watch. And when you visit our YouTube channel, please press the subscribe buttons. Uh, not because we want an advert, but you know, uh, there are certain things that we will not be able to do to spread the gospel on YouTube if we don't have as many viewers as possible. So um, today we're going to be looking at Matthew chapter 12, but I just want to mention one or two things uh, in terms of what we said in the book of Matthew so far. Uh, in the last uh, video, uh, we said it's important you mind the people that you hang around, that if you hang around people who speak evil of other people, uh, very soon you start speaking their language and you will see that your perception towards, towards that particular person will change. Uh, God told John the Baptist that, look, uh, the person that the Holy Spirit will descend on him, that's the person I told you that will come after you. And he himself testified in the book of John. You know, that's why we need to read uh, all the books of the Bible and put all the story to get, all stories together so that we can see the complete picture. John himself said it in John chapter 1, I believe. So I don't know why John have to send people to uh, Jesus, send two of his disciples to Jesus to start asking, are you the one or should we be expecting another one? Or well, something that I noticed was that um, Jesus did quite a lot of miracles and then people took the report to John. 
So uh, something changed when he heard what people said about Jesus. Will it be that you have changed your mind uh, based on, oh, thank you, Lord. You have changed your mind based on what you heard for some people. Um, someone you are watching me right now, you propose in your heart to do something for someone. And because of the report that you've had, you know, about that person, you've decided to change your mind. Uh, you were going to give someone money. You were going to help someone to do something. And then because of the report that you had, you, you've decided to change your mind. You didn't even uh, check to see whether that report is true or not. It ought not to be so. You should follow the witness in your heart. Don't be moved by what people say about other people. If you are concerned about what you've had, give the people the benefit of doubt. Call them or better still, ask God, Lord, this is what I had. Uh, should I still go ahead and do this thing or not? Uh, I won't be able to 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 talk about all the things we learned from Matthew, the book of Matthew, uh, so far. But I just want to encourage you to go and catch up on our videos, and we'll see quite a lot because the chapter of the Bible we're going to read today is really very long. So, and I want to invite you to join me as we read the book of uh, Matthew. I am going to be reading from the easy to read. Uh, version of the Bible. So please, uh, this is the way we do it. Whatever I minister to you from that chapter of the Bible, I want you to write it down, take a note and post it, uh, post it as a comment under this video. And let's begin to talk about the Word of God. Let's begin to discuss the Bible. That's my goal. I want us to talk about the Bible. What is it that God has revealed unto you? Because um, the things of God are revealed in parts. It will show you some things. It will show me some things. And we can all learn. We can all learn together. No one can claim that no, I know everything about what God has to say on a particular thing. So let's go and read the book of Matthew and let's see what God will have us um, um, see in his word today. Um, Jesus is Lord over the Sabbath day. Uh, that's the caption you know, that I have in the version of the Bible that I am reading today. About that same time, Jesus was walking through the fields of grain on a Sabbath day. His followers were with him and they were hungry. So um, they began to pick the grain and eat it. The Pharisees saw this. They said to Jesus, look, your followers are doing something that is against the Lord to do on the Sabbath day. Jesus said to them, you have read what David did when he and those who those with him were hungry. David went into God's house. He, he and those with him was offered. That there is something here that is greater than the temple. The scripture says, I don't want animal sacrifices. I want you to show kindness to people. You don't really know what that means. If you understood it, you will not judge those who have done nothing wrong. The Son of Man, God. on the sabbath day you will take the sheep and help eat out of the dish surely a man is more important than a sheep so it is right to do good again the same as the other hand but the pharisee left and made plans to kill jesus jesus knew what the pharisee were planning so he left that place and many people followed him he healed all who were first said when i have chosen he is the one i love and i'm very pleased with him i will fill him with my spirit and he will bring justice to the nations he will not argue or shout no one will hear his 
trade he will not break off even a bent stem of grass he will not put out even the weakest flame he will not give up until he has made justice victorious all people will hope in him then some man to jesus this was blind and could not talk because he had a demon inside him jesus healed the man and he could talk and see all the people were amazed at what jesus did they said maybe he is this promised son of david when the pharisees heard this they said this man uses the power of satan what they were what the pharisees were thinking is so he said to them every kingdom that fights against itself will be destroyed and every city or family that is divided against itself will not survive so if satan forces out his own demons then he is fighting against himself and his kingdom will not survive you say that i use the power of satan to force to force out demons if that is true then what power do your people use when they force out demons so your own people will prove that you are wrong but i use the power of god's spirit to force out demons and this shows that god's kingdom has come to you whoever wants to enter a strong man's house and steal his thing must first tie him up then they can steal the things from his house whoever is not with me is against me and anyone who does not walk with me is walking against me so i tell you people can be forgiven for every sinful thing that they do and for every bad things that they say against god but anyone who speak against speaks against the holy spirit will not be forgiven you can even speak against the son of man and be forgiven but anyone who speaks against the holy spirit will never be forgiven not now or in the future if you want good food you must make the tree good it will have bad food a tree is known by the kind of food it produces you snakes you are so evil how can you say anything good what people say with their mouths come from what fills their heart those who are good have good things saved in their heart though that's why they say good things but those who are evil have hearts full of evil and that's why they say things that are evil i tell you that everyone will have to answer for all the careless things that they have said this will happen on the day of judgment your words will be used to judge you what you have said will show whether you are right or whether you are guilty then some of the pharisees and teachers of the lord answered jesus they they said teacher we want to see you do a miracle as a sign from god jesus answered evil and sinful people are the ones who want to see a miracle as a sign but no miracle will be done to prove anything to them the only sign will be the miracle that happened to the prophet jonah jonah was in the stomach of the big fish for three days and three nights in the same way the son of man will be in the grave three days and three nights on the judgment day you you people who live now will be compared with the people of nineveh and they will be witnesses who show how guilty you are why do i say this because when jonah preached to those people they changed their lives and you are listening to someone greater than jonah but you refuse to change on the judgment day you people who live now will also be compared to the with the queen of south and she will be a witness who shows how guilty you are i say this because she traveled from far far away to listen to solomon's wise teaching and i tell you that someone greater than solomon is right here but you won't listen when an evil spirit comes out of a person it travels through a dry places looking for a place to rest but it finds none. so it says i will go back to the home i left when it comes back it finds that that home is still empty it's all neat and clean then the evil spirit goes out and brings even uh, and brings then the evil spirit goes out and brings seven other spirits more evil than itself then all go and live there and that person has even more trouble than before it is the same way with the evil people who live today while jesus was talking to the people his mother and brother stood outside they wanted to talk to him someone told him your mother and brothers are waiting for you outside they want to talk to you jesus answered who is my mother who are my brothers then he pointed to his followers and said see these people are my mother and my brothers yes anyone who does what my father in heaven want is my true brother and sister and mother now 
before I go into my notes, there are two things that I saw here. Um, Jesus said that um, God is not interested in the sacrifices that we offer. That the most important thing is that we need to be kind to people. And I saw something there. You know, they accused him of walking on the Sabbath day. And um, it's the tradition. Yes, the Lord says that uh, you have to keep the Sabbath day because it's holy. <laughs> when, I, when I go out for evangelism, I see some people, you know, attack me and say, um, uh, why don't you keep the Sabbath, Sabbath day? You are not supposed to worship on Sunday. You are supposed to worship on a Saturday. And Jesus said something fundamental here. And, uh, you know, some of those traditions that we are keeping, you know, we inherited, we inherited some things from our fathers based on what they told us. Um, do we actually understand the meaning of those things? Do we know why those traditions are in place? Do we ask questions to see actually whether the people who introduce those tradition to us they themselves actually understand the real meaning so for example they said it is not right for jesus to heal people you know on a sabbath day what's more important keeping the sabbath day and healing the people and then jesus says something there that caught my attention very interesting so he told them he said okay on the sabbath day have you forgotten that your priest they walk? So the God's commandment. So this 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 is really interesting. So God's commandment was that don't do anything on the Sabbath day. Keep it holy. But later on, when you read the book of Exodus, you will actually see the reason why God said that. It was so much that people can rest. Uh, people can clear their heart. You know, people can, uh, because the Lord rested, uh, people can have time to maybe fellowship with their family. You know, there's nothing like that in the Bible. I'm just adding my own. But more importantly, people, for them to have a time, they can rest and then, you know, spend time in the presence of God, for example. But they kept that rule to the letter. Uh, and Jesus now pointed out something. He said, okay, have you forgotten that your priest, they walk on the Sabbath day? Okay. So <laughs> if you are saying that uh, the Sabbath day should be holy, people who are overseers, <laughs> they're supposed to keep the Sabbath day. They walk on the Sabbath day, offering prayers you know they perform their uh priestly duties also because they have to do it every day even on the sabbath day what do you have to say concerning that okay i think right there and then they didn't know how to give an answer so what i am saying is that it's time for us to begin to check some of our traditions some things that have been handed down to us you know i remember those days the way, where i come from uh, the, one of the reasons why people have many children apart from the fact that they need those children to help them on the farm <laughs> one of the reasons why they have many children was because they would say uh, you have six children so the witch from your father's house we pick one the witch from your mother's house we pick another one so by the time they take one one and they one extra you will have three children they're not knowing that oh actually what was killing people was polio <laughs> thank god for for vaccination anyway i'm going to leave that for now the second thing i want to say before i go into my note right there was a the fact that um there are certain certain sickness uh sickness or diseases that are caused by demons we saw in this particular instance that jesus have to cast out demons from that person before the person will begin to talk so i don't just want you to think that you know um certain sicknesses are caused because there's a breakdown in your uh, body system or because you are infected uh, the demons are responsible for certain sickness so you don't go and start taking paracetamol for something that demon is, demon is responsible for, okay? Uh, you need to deal with them spiritually. But uh, that is not to say now that you have to go and start going for deliverance and uh, you start coughing. <laughs> you cough into the nylon bag and you are saying that, oh, you are cough. When I cough, coughed, you know, the snake came out, come out or something like that. No, that's not what I'm talking about. Uh, the best deliverance you can have is the deliverance through the word of God. When you confess the word of God over and over, over and over again, you declare what Jesus has done for you. That's deliverance. Now, I want to go into my notes and what I want to talk about today is that you will give an account, sir. 
or of every idle words that you have spoken. Your word is either building life or your word is destroying life. Your word is either building your own life or your word is also destroying your own life. So the Bible says that we will give an account of every idle word. He said that we that that we speak. So what are idle words? Idle words are empty words. They're words that does not inspire faith. They're words that doesn't build people up. They're words that um you know sometimes you may say oh I won't say anything. I will just keep my mouth shut. That is even worse because you are making the matter worse. Now nobody knows what's in your heart. Yeah, you are keeping your mouth shut. You are not saying anything, but your body language uh, says it all. We can read it from your body language. You are not in support. You are causing division. You are causing drive. The Bible says you are going to give an account. Now, Jesus Christ said in Matthew chapter 12, verse 34 to 35, he said, Oh, generation of vipers. I just wish <laughs> she wished that, you know, the kind of things you, you read in the Bible. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, my God. If you were to be today, especially in the country where I live, where you have to say nice, nice, good words. You know, some people are going to sue Jesus for that. How can you say, oh, generation of vipers? You know, he, that word was against fundamental human rights. But praise the Lord. Um, <laughs> he said, how can you being evil speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. And that's what I want to quickly talk about. If you have problem with I do words, whatever it is that you are saying from your heart, you know, two things are responsible for that. And before I go to that, I want to say this, that whatever words we say are important. Matthew 12, 37 says, For by your words you will be justified and acquitted, and by your words you will be condemned and sentenced. Um, if you If you don't confess what the blood of Jesus Christ has done for you, okay, you will not experience victory in that area of your life now the bible says with a heart a man believe and with your mouth confession is made unto salvation and some people come about this and i say oh okay uh, what's this about confession thing you know name it and claim it no i'm not just talking about naming it and claiming it so when you store god's word in your heart and you begin to say the words that are stored in your heart what happened is that angels will hack into your command they will they begin to bring to pass those words that you have spoken now this is how important this is you know there's a scripture that i will never forget uh many many years i mean not many years few years back the lord instructed us to begin to do some flyers some little confession booklets we i think we did like about seven or eight of them and we've distributed well over ten thousand copies you know in in looting and environment and the, the caption simply is i will have what i say and it was based on a particular scripture in the book of numbers chapter 14 28 to 32 uh, the, Moses sent some people to go and spy the land and they came back and they started complaining and they said oh the land is good but we are not able to possess the land we are like grass, grasshoppers compared to those people and God simply said something he said look surely as you have said in my ear so will I do unto you you know Numbers chapter 14 verses 28 to 32 just in case you are writing that and he said tell them as I live, says the Lord, what you have said in my hearing, I will do to you. What you have said, not what somebody has said. You know, the 10 people brought back the report, but they believe what those people said. They didn't listen to what Joshua and Caleb said. They listened to what the 10 elders said, and they started complaining on the, on the basis of that. And God said, look, surely what you have said, I will do unto you. So that's why words are important. Now, I want to quickly talk about uh, what will make your word carry weight. Uh, what will make your word carry weight? You know, I love things like this. Um, I, I, I saw Elijah just Elijah just appear from like it was like he appeared from the blues, and he said, um, uh, "Surely, as uh, surely, uh, surely, according to the word of the Lord, something like okay, I want to get it right." He said, "As uh, uh, surely as I live, according to the word of the Lord, there shall be no rain in this land." You know. 
and he just declared a war like that and then it didn't reign for the space of about uh, three years. But of, obviously, he didn't just speak that word like that. Uh, I believe, I pray, I posted something on Facebook today that we need the Elijahs of our time to begin to make a declaration over that nation, to begin to declare the word of the Lord over that nation. You know, we are praying people. There is a place for prayer. There is a place for declare, declaring the word of the Lord. After you pray, you have to make a declaration. You know, in the beginning when there was confusion, you know, and there was great dark, darkness, you know, and nothing happened. God didn't pray. Okay. God did not pray. <laughs> you know, he just declared. He said, let there be. So there is a place for us or where we do let there be. Now, if you want to make people behave in a particular way, you want your husband to behave in a way, you want your wife to behave in a particular place, you know, in a particular way, you just check the word you speak to them. So if you want somebody to shoot you, <laughs> not in the United Kingdom, because we don't carry guns there, not in Nigeria either, you know, I'm not aware that people who have licenses will go to the united states you know and then just speak some provoking word to someone uh, you just have to be careful you travel to a country like they're going to bring out gun and they're going to shoot you straight away okay because of what not because of what you have written because of that's how powerful words are so what we make your word carry with let's look at that the first thing is the condition of your heart uh jesus christ said oh generation of vipers he said how can you, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speak. One thing you can't resist is that whatever is in your heart is going to be what is going to come out in your world. And let me give uh, you a hint here, Sam. Uh, most of us, what happens sometimes is that we don't listen to people's heart. We listen to what people say. Sometimes, um, even though I said that, you know, you will say out what is in your heart. In, in your heart, some people have perfected; they've mastered that act. You know, um, I'm going to say this. I hope somebody. I'm not going to get into trouble when somebody says things like this. You know, when I came to United Kingdom and I was looking for a job and I'll do the interview, and they will say nice thing to you, like, "Oh, you did very well. You performed very well. That's excellent. That's brilliant." No. That's a lie. In a place where I come from, before I got to know the meaning of their excellent, fantastic, wonderful, oh, that's brilliant. You know, when, when I come from Nigeria originally, when someone to them say one tells you that's fantastic, that's excellent, you feel good. You know that you are performed very well. But okay, in the United Kingdom, when they say something like that's excellent, you know, that's fantastic, you know. No, it doesn't mean we have done. It's a word they speak to everyone, okay? So some people have perfected the act of not saying what's on their mind. So this is where you have to learn the art of reading the body language. You know, I learned this from one of my line managers a long time ago. He wanted to have a conversation. He said, Buki, I really like to talk to people face to face because then I can manage their emotions. So you have to learn to listen to the unspoken words. There are things in people's heart that they haven't said, but they can't hide their body language. You know, there are some things people just speak rash words, you know, because they are angry. They actually, they, they didn't mean that, especially in relationship, um, because you give your husband burnt offering last night and then the, he wakes up the next morning and just begin to rake something. I'm going to do No, no, the guy didn't mean it. Okay. It was just because of the burnt offering last Last night or maybe uh huh, there was no show last night and the guy was like oh you know no he didn't mean it so but what i'm saying is that the condition of our heart can affect what we say now what is more important is that if you want your word to carry weight you need to check who you are listening to you need to check what you are hearing i love what jesus said in john chapter 6 verse 50, 63 and he said it is the spirit that gives life john 6 63 it is the spirit that gives life. the body is of no value for that but the things i have told you they are from the spirit so they give life now when you learn to listen to the spirit and you speak the word from the spirit what happens is that your words will give life your words will carry weight now the other thing that we make your word you 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 speak words of wisdom people wants to listen to you the other thing that will make your word carry weight is the knowledge that you have when you know the subject matter you know what you're talking about you know 
Have you gone into a place and people just look at you and they say, you know, what has this one got to offer and things like that? You know, I remember I happened to go and preach in a place and lined in the front where people who have been preaching maybe even before I was born and they were in different categories and they got different ranks. And, and here I am. I just pitied the pastor that invited me. And I am in the presence of them, you know, and they're like, oh God, uh, what am I even going to say? But the Lord gave me utterance. Uh, thank God. God for that utterance. You know, the Lord gave me utterance and when I begin to ditch out some things, you know, they, 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 they started, you know, paying attention, you know, and to the extent that later on, somebody mentioned, I said, oh, the man opened up Genesis chapter 15 the way I've never seen it before, you know, uh, and that's it. So when the Holy Spirit begins to teach you and you become an expert, you know your subject very well. People will listen to you. So there's a difference between people listening to you because you know your subject and your words carrying authority, your words carrying power. So, for example, a lot of people wrote to go and say the prophet because they believe the prophet has got a word in his mouth that they don't know. Uh, so the prophet is going to tell them something and they know the word of the prophet is going to come to pass. So people tend to respect what people have to say. Now, this is how I'm going to end. The Bible says in the book of Proverbs chapter 12 verse 18, there, there is that speak like the piercing of a sword, but the tongue of the wise is held. Now, let your word bring health. Let your word make people whole. Um, care for people. Be kind to people. Um, Colossians chapter 3 verse 16 says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching and admonishing one another in Psalms. So one thing I find out is that if the word of the Lord is dwelling richly in our heart, what's going to come forth from our heart is going to be different. You know, how about us getting to that place whereby you store enough of God's word in you and what's coming out of you is Psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. You know, some people don't even, they don't sing Psalms and people who are singing Psalms, are, they're using it differently. Some people don't sing Psalm again. Some don't even sing songs because they think that you oh know song belongs to the old school is for the is is for those people who were born again many years ago. No, uh is a is a function of what is in your heart. The Bible says that when the word of Christ dwells richly in you, you will teach in Psalms, you will sing hymns, you will sing spiritual songs, and you will sing with grace in your heart to the Lord. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 29 say, Let no foul or polluting language, nor evil word, nor unwholesome or worthless talk come out of your mouth, but only such speech as is good and beneficial to the spiritual progress of others, as is fitting to the, to, to the need and occasion, that it may be a blessing and give grace to those who hear. I mean, that's amplified for you. It will amplify everything. So all that I have said in one in one sentence is that let your world minister grace here. I pray in the name of Jesus that the Lord is going to help you with your words. The Lord will help us with the words that we speak, that our words will bring healing, our world will bring wholeness, our words will build people up, our words will encourage people, our words will inspire people. In the name of Jesus. Let's pray for those who are saved. Father, in Jesus' name, I pray for every single person sick today um, who are looking for someone to join their faith with. Lord, I join my faith with them for a supernatural recovery. In the name of Jesus. Lord, I pray for that person that have just done operation and they want a quick recovery so that they can go back to their normal routine. Lord, I pray for a quick recovery today. I command wounds to be healed quickly in Jesus' name. Lord, I thank you for this miracle. I thank you for this. Well, I, I keep seeing the picture of somebody. I think you did operation in your leg. I don't know which of them, but I can see bandage around it. And you are in pain. You know, the Lord has healed you today. Uh, Lord, we thank you. We thank you for that. We give you praise. Oh, glory be to your name. 
Jaga Tegakalik is in Ganyan to Kobaraka Sadia. Somebody you couldn't walk very well. You 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 use um a walking stick. We receive your healing right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Lord, I thank you for all these people that you have healed today. I give you praise for it. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. I just want to put a disclaimer notice. It's got nothing to do with me. So nobody should come and start thanking me. So I want you to thank God. Uh, like Jesus Christ said, go and give your gifts to the priest. You know, go and show yourself to your pastor or wherever it is. And give God all the glory. You know, start worshiping God. It's got nothing to do with me. Disclaimer to it right straight away. Jesus is the before I go, I want to give someone the opportunity. You want to give your life to Jesus. You want to be born again. Uh, you want to have a hope that when you die, uh, something good is going to happen to you. Um, don't work hard, sir, to leave everything on earth. Okay? Don't work hard to leave everything on earth. You know? uh, work. So that you can have good reward in heaven. It's good for one to work hard. You know, you know the way the way my perspective about life changed completely. Uh, the way the day my perspective about li life changed completely was many years ago. I know my time is over like this. Eh? My daughter wanted to be a teacher. We, you know, you ask it, what do you want to become? And I was living in Nigeria, then I said, I wanted to become a teacher. And then I said, Okay, fine. If you want to become a teacher, God has blessed me. By the time you finish, I don't want you to go and start looking for a job. I bought a parcel of land to build school. You know, saying, okay, I'm going to build school when she's ready. But today, by the grace of God, we don't even live in Nigeria again. Thank God I heard the Spirit of God and listened to the leading of the Holy Spirit the same month that I sold the land. Because, of course, after some years, it was clear she wasn't going to be a teacher. Uh, she was going to pursue another. A career and the month that I sold that land, that was the month the, some people claimed to be the owners. They came to come and tell me, and they said that look, um, the land you bought was bought before it was sold to you anyway. Yeah, another story. But the point I want to make here is that you know I labored to put that money together to buy a land. My daughter is still alive. She doesn't want to do that again. She doesn't even want to go to that place again. So that's what I'm saying. Why? Are you laboring? Why are you working hard for things you will leave? Hard? Something that you don't even know how they're going to use it. You work hard to have a Janjaiti building. You don't know if you pass on now the next day. You don't know whether your son is just going to say, I, I don't like the style of that building. I'm going to sell it. So why don't you work hard to get an inheritance in heaven? You have good quality of life on earth, but work hard. Look forward to heaven. So if you want to do that, you want to be born again, you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, there's a short prayer that I want you to say after me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you today. I confess that I am a sinner. I repent of my sins. I believe you die for me so I can have eternal life. I ask you to come into my heart. Be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you for saying that prayer. You are now born again. Uh, you become be, you belong to the family of God. I want you to do one more thing. I want you to get in touch with me. I want to send you some coupons materials that are going to help you to grow spiritually. Uh, our email addresses are on the screen info at heavenofglory.com. Telephone number 079-840-63219. 079-840-63219. Get in touch with us, you know, write us if you have any questions. Ask us and the Lord will help us to answer your question. You need any support or anything. You don't have to be a member of our fellowship. The Lord will help us to support you. And I want you to do one more thing. Find a local church around you. You can start up. Um, tell them you are now born again. If you want to be part of our fellowship, we do a series of online activities. Uh, we have the Mirror of the World daily. We do prayer on, on, on Tuesday, which is online. And then we have our Bible study on Friday. And if you leave... Around Luton, Bedfordshire, meeting Kings, Hallow, um, North London, everywhere. You can join us for our service on Sunday, 9 a.m. to 11.30. That's our service time on Sunday. And as you do, I believe that your life will be transformed. I want to thank you very much for watching this video. A copy is going to be available shortly on our YouTube channel. 
you either look for the haven of glory or you look for the mirror of the world or you type in text word and then please don't forget hit the subscribe button and then share this video with someone thank you so much for watching and god bless you have a wonderful week bye